Shalom. You're now tuned in to another edition of Thus Said the Lord, or United Kingdom of Israel Congregation. My name is Deacon Kadar. I'd like to thank y'all for tuning in. Uh, hope y'all had a blessed and productive week. I'd like to say happy Sabbath, Ashar Shabbat, however your lingo goes. Um, Most High Christ blessed to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. Um, tonight, what we're going to tackle tonight, we're going to tackle why is the law important? Um, because there's a certain um, amount of disdain for the law in our community that's actually, um, it's, it's heart-wrenching, you know? When the Most High passed now all this judgment on the earth, um, the fact that our communities are in shambles due to lawlessness. Our people have the audacity to actually hate the Most High God's laws, statutes, and commandments. Right here in Chicago, six, seven hundred murders. What's wrong with the laws of God? You know, thou shalt not murder. That's a law of God. What's wrong with that? Nothing. So tonight, we're going to go precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. We're going to see what thus said the Lord says. Okay? Like we always do, we're going to start off in the book of Psalms. Chapter 119, verse 104. Through thy precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. And one of those false ways that we hate is lawlessness. Okay? Lawlessness is a false way. Okay? It, 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 really, it, it really baffles me that in our community, our, it, it, this, this, this Christian mentality is run so rampant when actually it's a death mentality. You know, everybody's saved by grace. Everybody has grace. But where's grace with Kanika, John, with Kanika Jenkins? Where, where, where was that grace? Because of that, because of that little young woman, if she was taught the laws of God, that wouldn't happen. Okay, that wouldn't happen. But no, we want to shut the, the hotel down like it was the hotel that killed her. No, we killed her with our, with our lawlessness, with our saved by the blood of Jesus mentality. That's what killed that young lady. And that's what kills every young man and woman throughout this country, throughout the four corners of this earth of black and Indian, of, of Negro and Indian descent. Okay? That's what is killing us. Lawlessness. But as the scriptures say, we make lies our refuge. So we like to blame other things rather than what the scripture says. Let's get right to it. We're going to start off in the book of Esther in the Apocrypha. Go to the book of Esther, the 13th chapter. The book of Esther, chapter 13 and verse 4. And it reads, Declare unto us that in all nations throughout the world there was a scattered of certain malicious people that had laws contrary to all nations. Hmm. So, this whole world knows that the so-called black man, Hispanic man, Native American man, woman and child in the western hemisphere of the world and scattered out through all four corners of the earth are malicious people. This whole, all the nations of the earth know that. Okay? That we have laws like nobody else. This whole earth knows that. They know, they know that about us. Okay? And continually de despise the commandments of kings. Hmm. So every time the most every time the most high God set up a righteous king over us to hand us the commandments, we despise them. And this whole earth knows that for a fact. And when the funny part about it, whenever I encounter someone from the other side of the world, whether they from whether they be from India, China, even one of the European countries, they know we are the true Yehudim. 
They know we are the true Jew. But over here, we are we 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 are we hiding ourselves. Uh, we, we, we hiding ourselves in, in falsehoods. Okay. From now, let's go to the book of Genesis. Tonight's class is about why is the law important. So we're gonna start from the beginning as to why the law was important. Okay. So we're going to start with one of the first laws. We're going to start with the first law. Like we're going to start with the law of today. Okay? What is today? From sundown right now to sundown tomorrow is the Shabbat or the Holy Sabbath, the seventh, the, the seventh day. Why is the seventh day important? Well, let's go to the The book of Genesis, chapter 2 and verse 7. We'll start verse 1. Start verse 1 first. The book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 1. Thus the heaven and the earth were finished, all, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day. All his work which he had made, and God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. So from the beginning, the Sabbath day was a sanctifying day. Okay? And we go into the book of Exodus, you read that the fact that the Sabbath day is a sign between the Most High and his people. Okay? That's why these laws are important. Because everyone is not God's people. Okay? From there, let's go, we're going to stay in the book of Genesis. Because like a lot of people, when they hear about the laws, um, they like to call them the Mosaic laws. But yet, in fact, how could they be the Mosaic laws if Adam sinned? Mm. If Adam sinned, how are they the laws of Moses? Because when we read in 1 John 4 and 3, that sin is transgression of the law. So if Adam sinned, that means he broke the laws of God. So the laws were from the beginning. Let's go to the book of Genesis. We'll stay in the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 26. And we're going to go to another one of our forefathers. The book of Genesis chapter 26 and verse 5. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. We're going to go up. Let's see why. What is, what, what is the Most High God? What, what's the message that the Most High God is conveying here? Let's go up to the book, book of Genesis chapter 26 and verse 4. I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven. And I will give unto thy seed all these countries. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. So the Most High God is telling Abraham, because you obey my laws, that your seeds will be plentiful on the earth. Okay? So, because Abraham kept the law, statutes, and commandments, the seeds were prosperous. Okay? But there's also a flip side to not keeping the Most High God's law, statutes, and commands. Okay? Always. Let's 
from there. Let's go to the book of Exodus. The book of Exodus chapter 16. Because like I said, right now, right now we are faced with the fact that we're trying to bring our people back to the covenant. Bring our people back into these laws. These laws that were given to us by the creator to govern us as a person on a, on a, on a, on a personal level and to govern our nation and on a, on, a, on, a, on a wide level to govern this world. Okay? And people wonder why the world because the rightful owners do not rule it. As a matter of fact, let's get that. The rightful owners. We'll come back to the book of Exodus. Let's go to the book of Second Edris in the Apocrypha. Second Edris, chapter six and verse fifty. Four. And after these, Adam also, who made his Lord of all creatures, of him come we all. And the people whom, whom also whom thou hast chose. All this I have spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou hast made it the world for our sakes. Okay? The Most High God made this world for us. That's why we're supposed to be keeping these commandments to govern this world. To govern ourselves, govern everything around us. Okay? So, book of Exodus, chapter 16 and verse 28. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long refuse ye to keep my commandments and my laws? See, for that the Lord hath given you the Sabbath, therefore he giveth you the sixth day of the bread of two days. Abide ye every man in his place. Let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. So that the people rested on the seventh day. The seventh day should be a day of rest. Okay? Or if you're not resting, you should be doing the Lord's work. Which means to be out waking up your people. Bringing them back into the covenant. Again, that's why the law is important. Tonight's class is about the importance of the law. The seventh, the seventh day is a very important day. We wonder why so much death and destruction goes on from Friday night to Saturday night. Again, my heart goes out to that young lady and everybody who loses their life. Not just this young lady. Young ladies, young men all across this country are losing their life due to breaking the Sabbath. Exodus chapter 35. Why is the law important? Because the law is life. The law is life. Period. Exodus chapter 35. First start, we're going to start at verse 1. And Moses gathered all the congregation of the children of Israel together and said unto them, These are the words which the Lord hath commanded that ye should do them. Not just read them, not hear them, not like them on the Facebook post. Do them. When I see a brother on the street and be like, yeah, man, I like what y'all teach him, man. Yeah, that's the truth. No, do it. Verse 2. Six days shall work be done, but on the seventh day there shall be unto you a holy day. The word holy means separate. Okay? The seventh day shall be a holy day unto you. A Sabbath of rest to the Lord. Whosoever doeth work therein shall be put to death. And that's why the law is important. The law is life. To break the law, you are compiling sin on top of sin. Okay? 
In Romans 6 and 23, it clearly states that the wages of sin is death. Let's go to the book of Leviticus. Leviticus, the 26th chapter. I had a talk, I had a talk with a Northern Kingdom gentleman, you know what I mean, on the on job, and um, he was thoroughly convinced that the laws of God were given to the whole world. And he said, oh, this is why the world is in shambles, because the whole world broke the laws of God. Well, let's find out, did the whole world break the laws of God. Here we go. The book of Leviticus chapter 26 and verse 46. I'm sorry. The book of Leviticus chapter 26. I'm going to start at verse 45. But I will for their sakes remember the covenant of their ancestors who I brought forth out of the land of Egypt in the sight of the heathen. Wait a minute. So right now in Leviticus 26 chapter in the 45th verse, it says that the Most High God brought somebody out of Egypt. Okay? Because he remembered the covenant that they had, that he had with their ancestors. And he did this in the sight of the heathen. That means the rest of the world. Okay? That I might be their God, I am the Lord. These are the statutes and judgments and laws which the Lord made between him and the children of Israel in Mount Sinai by the hand of Moses. So, these laws that are so important to you, black man, Hispanic man, Native American man, these laws are, in, are life. All right, this law is given to you. This law is what binds you to the Creator. Okay, your law, the law is freedom. Okay, that's why the law is important. Let's go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 58. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 58. If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou may fearest the glorious and fearful name of Yahweh. If you will not, you know what? I want to keep these laws. Let's see what the Most High says. Let's go back to stay in the same, same chapter. So the 15th verse. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments and statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Okay? Curses have come upon our people and overtaken us. Let's, 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 let's take a look at one of these curses. Let's go back to the book of um, go back to the book of Leviticus. Because you know, a lot of you know, we, we read the book of Deuteronomy and go through those curses. But there's more things. There, there are more. Let's go to let's go to Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 26. The book of Leviticus. Chapter 26. I'm going 
going to start at the book. I'm going to start at verse 13. I am the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, and ye should not be their bondmen. No more slaves, okay? This was back then. This is getting ready to happen again, because we're in the new Egypt right now. And I have broken the bands of your yoke and made you go upright. But if you will not hearken unto me and will not do these commandments, and if you shall despise my statutes, or if your soul arbor my judgments, okay? That's what's happening right now. This is why the law is important. So we can understand judgment. Judgment is going out, going out across this whole earth and nobody understands it. Okay? Nobody understands judgment. The book of Proverbs tells you the wicked men don't understand judgment. Okay? So for right now, but if you despise my statutes or if your soul offer my judgment, that means hate the most high judgment, abhor. Our people hate the most high's judgment. Okay? You tell our you tell our people, man, look, this certain certain thing happened. This judgment from the most high. I'll be ready to fight. Not me personally, but I'm just saying, you know, it, it happens. People actually get angry. That ye break my covenant. Verse 16. I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror. So because we hate the law, we hate the Most High's judgment for breaking the law, well, he has appointed over us terrorists. Okay? Right now in Babylon the Great, which the world calls America, is ran by the so-called white man, the biggest terrorist on earth. Him and his hound dog, Becky. The biggest terrorist on earth. But yeah, we point fingers at Allah Akbar. He's a wild man, don't get me wrong, Ishmael's a wild man. But he ain't the biggest terrorist on earth. Consumption and the burning egg that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart, and ye shall sow your seed in vain, and your enemies shall eat it. Verse 17 I will set my face against you, and you shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you. So the same people who hate us, that we're trying to um, ask for equal rights from, the most high say due to the fact that we don't think his law is important, that we won't, that we don't want to observe his laws and do them, he's gonna point up over us terror. Okay? And the people who's gonna reign over us are gonna hate us. Okay? We'll jump down to verse 18. And if you will not yet for all this hearken unto me, I will punish you seven times more for your sins. That's why we, we always, and the crazy part, I, I always, I ask that, this baffles me, I laugh at Negroes when they sit up and have this, this kind of conversation in 2017. Negroes, you should not still be having this conversation in 2017. Ah, ah, why we go to jail 15, 20 years for crack and then the white man get slapped on the wrist for cocaine? You should not be having that conversation in 2017. You should know better by now. we we'll read that. The Lord says, And if you will not yet for all this hearken unto me, meaning all this that I'm doing to you, I don't put the white man over you. He know, he's hanging you from trees. He's raping your mamas. He's raping your sons. He built a, a whole prison, uh, built a whole 
that prison in the industry off you. Built this country on the backs of our fathers. Stood up our families. Set up a, 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 a slave patrol. And now the slave patrol will call, call itself serving and protecting. And he said, if you, st you still don't get the picture, think you're going to survive? Think you're going uh, to think you're just trying to get you some money in captivity? The most high say, he going to punish us seven times for our sins, man. Okay? We think, oh, we just got to get open up a business. And we think we're going to open up a business. Think we think our business is going to flourish on the Lord's Day, on Saturday? No. The most high going to send somebody in there and stick that thing up, man. Verse 19, and I will break the pride of your power. You know, black power. The most high say you'll break that thing. And I will make your heaven as iron and your earth as brass. Yeah, captivity. Verse 20, and your strength shall be spent in vain. And your yield her increase. Everything we do here is for naught, man. Why? Because we have forgotten the law of our God. And all we have to do is turn back. Okay? Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy. Because what happens when we turn back to the laws of our God? What happens? Why is the law important? Yeah, we, yeah, we broke the law and we failed. But guess what? We are not the old white lady from the from the from the commercial in the, in the 80s. We are not falling. Oh, I fall, I fell, and I can't get up. That's not us. Okay, we can get up. And the most I say, once we get up, what happens? It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter thirty. We're gonna start at verse six. And Yahweh, your power, will circumcise their heart. This means going to change our minds, okay? And the heart of thy seed and the and the minds of our children to love Yahweh our power with all thy heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. See, because to love God according to First John five and three is to keep His commandments. So if we love the Most High, that then we may live. The law is life. Why is the law important? Because life is important. Black lives matter, right? If black lives matter, keep the laws. Verse 7. And the Lord thy God will put these curses upon thy enemies. All the curses in Deuteronomy, Leviticus 26, they will go to the enemies. And all the blessings of Deuteronomy Will, and all the blessings of this will come to us if we come back to the laws. Ain't no way around it. You're not, we're not going to change our predicament unless we put some law and order of the Most High God in our life. Okay? You keep praying, you can pray. Who the hell are you praying to? Most High say, I hear, I don't, he don't hear the, 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 the prayers of sinners. John 9, 31. Proverbs 28, 9 say, he that turned his, his ear away from the law, the prayers of the abomination. So who are you praying to? Well, the devil took Christ on the high mountain and said, you serve me, I give you the world. So who do you think is giving you your little trinkets? That's why they only last a season. And they come with death and destruction. Check yourself, Q. Third, book of Deuteronomy 30 and verse 7. And the Lord thy God will put these curses upon thy enemies and upon them that hate thee. So remember in Leviticus, the Most High said, if you don't keep my laws, I'm going to point over you terror and those who hate you. You ain't figured out who's over you yet and who hates you? You ain't figured it out yet? So in Deuteronomy 30 and 7, the Most High says, 
I'm going to put these curses upon your enemies and all those that hate you. Okay? Verse 8. And thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Lord and do all his commandments which I command thee this day. And the Lord thy God will make thee plenty, plenteous in every work of thy hand. That's all it takes, man. This ain't that. This ain't hard. That's why the, that's, that's why the scriptures in, in 1 John tell the commandments are not grievous. They're not hard. But the problem is our people are stiff-necked and hard-headed. That's the problem. Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 33. Moses, chapter 33, verse 4. We'll start at verse 3. Yea, he loved the people. All his saints are in thy hand. And they sat down at thy feet. Everyone shall receive thy words. Moses commanded us a law, even, an, even the inheritance of the congregation of Jacob. The law is our inheritance. Okay? It's our culture. It's our heritage. Okay? This is who we are. It's not a religion for us. It's like, um, I like to hear, I, I, I often hear our people sitting around talking about, well, we got generational curses. We got to get these generational curses off us. What are you talking about? So if you're saying we got curses, then that, now you're saying, now you're admitting that we're cursed. But you, won't, but you will not admit the fact that the only one who can curse us is the Most High God, the creator of heaven and earth. Our people, are, we got to come out of madness, man. We have to come out of the madness of Christianity. And when I say Christianity, I'm not, just, I'm not talking about the cross, going to church. When I say Christianity, I'm talking about Islam. I'm talking about comedic science. I'm talking about more science. I'm talking about planet Nibiru. I'm talking about uh, Christianity. Okay? All of the world's religions go back to the Catholic papal. Okay? book of Deuteronomy, chapter 33. Let's, go, let's jump down to verse 10. Jump down to verse 10. They shall teach Jacob thy judgments and Israel thy law. They shall put incense before thee, the whole burnt sacrifice upon, the, by, upon thy altar. So from there, again, we're showing that Jacob or Israel, this inheritance, which is the law, was giving to you, not the whole world. That's why the law is important. It is yours. It's your gift from God. From now, let's go to the book of Joel. book of Joel chapter 2 and verse 27 and ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel that I am the Lord your God and none else and my people shall never be ashamed see right now in the year as they say they call it 2017 we are ashamed that we are the most highest people 
I'm not talking about awaken Israel, because awaken Israel lets you know in a minute. But I am talking about our people who are still under that Christianity spell, who are still under the spell of I am an African living in America. So they think they're an African American. Or, or they, they, they descend African descent. I'm of African descent. <laughs> Time to come out of that madness to come back to the most high God's laws. Okay? Because these laws is what's going to stabilize us in these end times. That's why a lot of our people are, right now, as the world is doing this wobble, a lot of, of our people are doing the wobble right along with it. Because they are not stable. They worried about heart. They worried about all types of stuff rather than keep their minds on these commandments. Okay? Amos 3 and 1. The book of Amos, chapter 3 and verse 1. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O house of Israel, against the whole family, which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only, let me read that again, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Again, the Most High says, because you choose not to walk, because you choose to walk contrary to me, I'm going to punish you seven times fold for your sins. That's why he said it repeating again in the book of Amos. Us only have we known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, that's why we're getting punished the hardest. But think about that. African American, where's your land? The, the, the crazy part about it, us over here in America, we have this uh, infinity with Africa. Ain't many places in Africa you can go, Negro. Ain't many places, if any, that you can go. You fool, you have made lies your refuge. From now, let's go back. Let's go to the book of Joshua. Because as we just read Joel, we read Amos, read Deuteronomy, and it appears again in Psalms 147, 19 and 20, that he showed his word unto Jacob, and his laws and his statutes unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any other nation. Okay? So with that being said, there's something we're supposed to be doing. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. And it reads, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written there for him, and then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Watch this. Let me point this out right quick. Every black person in America tries to be rich, famous, you name it. But do you die rich and famous? That's the question. Do you die rich and famous? Do you hand, and hand some down to your to your children? Let's keep it real. How many of your favorite rich black people actually died and hand some down to their children? That's how many. That's how many. Michael Jackson, king of pop. They made his damn kids and damn honkies. Who them kids? Who are them kids? Stop playing games. Prince, where's his where's his children? None. Bill Cosby. Where's where's his son? His son got killed back in the 90s. 
<laughs> this law, man. This law is an inheritance. This is what we should be passing down to our children. When we meditate on, on, this, on this law day and night, that's how we are prosperous in our ways. From there, let's go to the book of Sirach in the Apocrypha. Forty-five and verse seventeen. He gave unto him commandments and authority in the statutes of judgment, and he should teach Jacob the testimonies and inform Israel in his laws. That is the purpose. These laws are always to be taught to Jacob, to the sons and daughters of Jacob. These laws are important to you, Israel. Okay? These laws are important to your whole well-being. Because in Judah, the 5th chapter, in the 20th and 21st verse, let's get it. Right now, we are under siege. We are, we are at war, spiritual and physical. And our people don't know it. Why? Because our people are asleep. And verse 20. Now therefore, my Lord and governor, if there be any error in this people, means sin, like I, like I started off the class in the book of Esther, when it reads that this whole world knows that we are a malicious people who have went against our God. Okay? Now therefore, my Lord and governor, if there be any error in this people and they sin against their God, let us consider that this shall be their ruin. It's our ruin. Shout out to everyone who's, who's standing firm in these law statutes and commandments. Okay? I know it ain't easy. Family think you're crazy because you don't want to eat pork. You don't want to celebrate birthdays no more. You know, you don't kick it with for Christmas. You don't do you don't do any of the other things of the world. Hallelujah. Endure to the end. Okay. And let us go up and we shall overcome them. See? All the nations know we sin against our God. We are easy pickings. Okay? Verse 21. But if there be no iniquity in their nation, again, in their nation, see, our people got have to get out of the selfish mentality, okay? We have to come back to being nation-minded, okay? Not individual, not camp, nation-minded, Okay? Let my Lord now pass by, lest their Lord defend them, and their God be for them, and we become a reproach before all the world. All the nations know, when our God fight for us, they will be made an example of, just like ancient Egypt, just like ancient Babylon, just like Greece, just like Rome. Well, I'll take that back. Rome has not received its judgment yet. Because America is an extension of Rome. 
the judgment is the great judgment is coming. You're seeing it. It's like an avalanche. The snowball starts small and it gets bigger and gets bigger. Starts off as a couple little chariots flying here and there, causes some earthquakes, causes some hurricanes, some forest fires, set, you know, messing around a few nuclear plants. Oh, it's going to get ugly. But your job, black man, Hispanic woman, black woman, Native American man, your job is to come back to these laws so you can have that hedge of protection. Okay? Let's, stay in the book of, let's go back to the book of Sirach. Still on that, um, we're going back to that Joshua. Meditate. Keep these laws, standards, and commandments that we may be prosperous. Okay? Our downfall was we were swaying away from the law, standards, and commandments. That's why the law is important. The law is life. Anything other than other than that, other than that is death, man. Book of Sirach, chapter 6, verse 37. Let thy mind be upon the ordinances of the Lord and meditate continually in his commandments. He shall establish thine heart and give thee wisdom at thy own desire. Meditate continually. Keep the law, statutes, and commandments. Be charitable. Okay? Correct your brothers and sisters, man. When you see a brother out in, in, in public, pull that brother to the side, man. Let that brother, man, teach that brother who he is. You see a sister out here dressed reckless and you know she's craving for attention? Give her the attention that she really needs. Let that sister know she don't got to be out here like that. Let her know she a daughter of Sarah. Okay? She's a daughter of the king. She does not have to be, it don't got to be that way. That's what love is. Love your people, man. Come back to the law. That's what the law, that's what the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit is the law, statutes, and commandments. That's what it will have you doing. Not fighting on Facebook over, over doctrine. Okay? Why is the law important? Well, Deuteronomy 28 chapter tells us we observe the law we'll be above all nations. Verse 15 says of the 28 chapter says we break the law, we're going to be under the nations. Well, it's on to the book of Baruch. the book of Baruch, chapter 3 and verse 8. Um, take that back. Let's go. Let's start at Baruch. Let's start at verse, start at verse 2. Book of Baruch, chapter 3 and verse 2. Hear, O Lord, and have mercy, for thou how art merciful, and have pity upon us. Because we have sinned before thee. For thou endurest forever. And we perish utterly. Because we sin against the most high God. We perish. Not that we die. No we perish. Perish means to die an untimely death. Okay. Mm. Verse 4, O Lord, Almighty, thou God of Israel, 
Hear now the prayers, the prayers of the dead Israelites. Okay? It's not talking about dead in the sense of um, underground dead. Okay? It's not dead people don't pray. So what is it talking about? You're spiritually dead. Okay? If you read in the book of um and and and, and John 9 31 it says that the most high don't hear the prayers of sinners. Okay? So right now there's a cry going out to, to, to hear the prayers of the of the sinners. Okay? Why? Here it goes. And of their children. Because in Hosea 4 and 6, the most I say, if you forget my law, I will also forget your children. That's why we, we, we have to come back to this law. I'm going to finish reading. O Lord Almighty, thou God of Israel, hear now the prayers of the dead Israelites and of their children, which have sinned before thee and not hearken unto the voice of their God. For the which cause these plagues cleave unto us. Okay? Because of the sins of our forefathers, man. These plagues cleave unto us. These plagues of poverty. These plagues of self-hatred. Okay? This plague of ignorance. The plague of, of, of calling evil good and good evil. Verse 5, remember not the iniquities of our forefathers, but think upon the power of thy name now at this time. For thou art the Lord our God and thee, O Lord, will we praise. Verse 7, for this cause thou hast put thy fear in, thy, in our hearts to the intent that we should call upon thy name and praise thee in our captivity. For we have called to mind all the iniquity of our forefathers that sinned before thee. So the same thing that we're doing in this captivity, we're just making it replay all over again. All the same things that our forefathers did during the Roman captivity, during the Greek captivity, during the Assyrian captivity, during the Silk Road slave trade, during, during the, during the, uh, the sub-Saharan slave, slave trade. Through the Babylonian, Egyptian, you name it, Assyrian, all the way down the line, man. Everything that we've done in previous captivity, we're balling all up in one and doing it right here in America. Verse 8. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity, where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse and to be subject to payments according to all the iniquities of our fathers which departed from the Lord our God. Hear, O Israel, the commandments of life. Again, why is the law important? Because the law is life. And to go against the law, to not keep the laws of God is death. Okay. Here, verse nine. Again, the Book of Baruch, chapter three, and verse nine. Here is here Israel, the commandments of life. Give ear to understand wisdom. Verse ten. How happened it, Israel, that thou art in thy enemy's land? You're in your enemy's land. You ain't figured it out yet. You're in the land of your enemies. That's why the law is important. Okay? That thou art waxing old in a strange country. That thou art defiled with the dead. With the spiritually dead. We are defiled. We are holy people, man. We must come back to the law. We must come back to these commandments. We're going to jump over one chapter. 
Because a lot of people like, oh man, the book is a, the Bible, that's a religious book. That's the white man book. We call, we call them through this book. It's nothing but black in this book. Okay? The book of Baruch, chapter 4, verse 1. This is the book of the commandments. Not religion. This is the book of commandments. Of God. And the law that endureth forever. Not just in ancient time. This law is forever. Okay? All that, that keep it shall come to life. That's why when you read in the, in the root of the third chapter, it said we are defiled with the dead. So these, these heathens don't know nothing about God's commandments. We have to stop defiling ourselves with the dead. Okay? But such as leave it shall die. Again, these commandments are life. That's why we're being put to death at an alarming rate. We refuse to keep the commandments. We want to do what we want to do. We want to follow our own mind. We want to follow our own heart. See what the Lord says about following your own heart. The book of Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So if you're going to follow your own heart, your own mind, you're desperately wicked. Man. Get one more on that heart. Go to the book of Mark. One more on that heart. It's the book of Mark, chapter 7, verse 21. For within, out of the hearts of men, proceed evil thoughts. So nothing good comes from my own, from my own mind. Nothing but evil thoughts. That's why this is the book. This is what governs our mind. This is what governs and what keeps us all right. Okay? So what kind of thoughts comes out of the, out of the hearts of men? Let's see. Because first and foremost, how we know that when it says out of the, the hearts of men proceed evil thoughts? Because this don't think. Don't be so simple. If it says heart, and it says thought, you know, this don't think. This pumps blood. So what kind of thoughts come out of the heart? Let's read them. Adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these things come from within. And defile the man. That's why the law is important. I want to tell y'all thanks, thanks again for tuning in. To United Kingdom of Israel congregation. Thus said the Lord. Uh, my name is Deacon Kadar. And um, hope y'all enjoy man. We got to stop following our own mind. Okay. The law is life. Come back to the law. The law is important. Don't ever let nobody tell you that God's laws are done away with. That God's laws are not important. All this, all that was just during the ancient time. These laws endure forever. I people love to repeat uh, Hebrews when they say, oh, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. But when we say he's about laws, they say, oh, it was back then. But wait a minute, I thought Jesus was the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. And Malachi 3 tells us, the most high don't change. So the most high don't change, and the Christ said he came to do the will of the Father. What makes you think he changed? Come on now. We got to come out of madness. We got to come out of that madness. Let's go back to the book of Sirach. The 
book of Sirach, chapter 19, verse 19. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. Hmm. The knowledge of the commandments. So Hosea 4 and 6 say, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. What knowledge are you talking about? The knowledge of the commandments. Okay? Let's read that again. It's the book of Ecclesiasticus and the Apocrypha. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. And they that do things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. See that? This thing go not just one, two, three, ten folds. Not only will you be prosperous, uh, uh, prosperous right here in, in this life, but you will also have the right to immortality. No. No. From there, let's go to the book of Deuteronomy. That's what it's about. It's about being prosperous. Okay? In this life and in the next one. In this kingdom, this kingdom is over with. Okay? We're about having wisdom and stability. That's what prosper that's, that's what being prosperous is. Prosperous is in this kingdom. Being having being being stable. Okay? Being stable in your mind, spirit. Okay? Go to Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter. We're going to start. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, and verse, verse 1. Let's start verse 1. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and judgments, which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that he might do them in the land whether you go to possess it, that thou might fear the Lord thy God to keep his statutes and his judgments, which I command thee, that thou, thy son, and thy son's son all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. Okay? This thing is this this whole teaching of the commandments. That's why I teach them, that's why I said the commandments are the doctrine of life. That your life may be prolonged. Who told you the good die young? We got to come out of that madness. We have made lives our refuge. Matthew 19, 16 tells us there's nobody good but the Father. That's, that's flat out the Mashiach's mouth. Nobody's good but God. Jump down to verse 25. Deuteronomy chapter 6. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he hath commanded us. We'll jump up to verse 24. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes to fear the Lord our God for our good always. It's for our own good to fear the most high God. 
Okay, he has the keys to life and death, to prosperity and to poverty. Okay, to freedom and to bondage. It's for our own good. That he might preserve us alive as it is at this day. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he has commanded us. It's that simple. Okay? If we don't keep these commandments, we die. We perish. Okay? We're impoverished. We're scattered out through the four corners of the earth. Our enemies are over us. Okay? Just want to hit something right quick. Just to add on to that, our enemies being over us. And Zechariah chapter 11, verse 5. Whose possessors, you know, someone who owned you, you know, been taken captivity, sold from master, sold, still got to, still got the slave master's names. Okay? Whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. And they that sell them say, Blessed be the Lord, for I am rich. And their own shepherds pity them not. That's talking about our own leaders. Okay? Your aldermen, your congressmen, your pastor. We don't give a damn. Okay? All he cares about is his 10%. Okay? Thank y'all for tuning in, man. Um, oh, yeah. The world's supposed to end tomorrow. Well, it's going to be a rapture, though, right? Uh, let's type something right quick before we go. Life. The commandments, right? It's, we're going to do the same thing. Commence life. So the rapture is supposed to happen tomorrow to the Christians. The lawless ones. The lawless ones going to get swooped out of here, huh? <laughs> Let's find out. Let's go to Matthew. Matthew, the 24th chapter. It's actually one of my favorite chapters in the Bible, but it's not one of them. One of my favorite chapters. But I definitely dig this one. Matthew 24 and verse, verse 2. I mean, I'm sorry, verse, Matthew 24 and verse 40. The rapture, right? Everybody might even get taken, right? Hmm. Watch this. Then, the book of Matthew chapter 24, verse 40. Then shall two be in the field. And one shall be taken, and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, and one shall be taken, and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. Wait a minute. So we don't know what what hour that, that, that the Christ is coming. But so before then it says one woman should be taken, and another one will be left. And it says one Two shall be in the field, and one shall be taken. Right? I mean, two shall be in the field, one will be taken, and the other one left. Well, let's get some um, let's get some clarification on that. Let's see what that's talking about. Since the rapture is supposed to be happening tomorrow. You know, and let's see. Real quick. Let's we'll go to the book of where I want to go with this. That's a couple places I could go, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go Sirach.
Here we go. So one shall be taken, right? Let's see, watch this. So the rapture saying that the Christians are, are finna hightail out of here. <laughs> Let's see. The book of Sirach, chapter 23 and verse 27. And they that remain, you know, one shall be taken. Right? The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 23, verse 27. And it says, they that remain shall know that there is nothing better than the fear of the Lord. And that there is nothing sweeter than to take heed unto the commandments of the Lord. It is great glory to follow the Lord. To be received of him is long life. So, those who are going to be taken, I mean, you're going to be killed. Ain't no rapture. That's not biblical. Okay? From now, let's go to the book of, uh, let's go to Isaiah, two, Isaiah 8. Book of Isaiah 8. So everybody's speaking of, the, of this rapture and, uh, Oh, man. September 23rd, the world's end. But Christ said, he don't know. The angels don't know. Only the most high know. So that leads me to believe this. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 8. And verse 20, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, because there is no light in them. So if they don't speak to this word, to this what this book is saying, there is no light in them. So what are we talking about? What light is it talking about? What, what light? Okay. Proverbs. Let's go to Proverbs 6. The book of Proverbs, chapter 6, and verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is a light, and reproofs of instruction are way of life. So, they speak not to the testimony of this book, they're not keeping these commandments. And if they're not keeping these commandments, you know there's no light in them. That's the importance of the law. To get an understanding. To have a right to the tree of life. Okay? And from now, we're getting ready to close out. Let's go to the book of Second Edges. A lot of people like to be lawless. They wear that lawlessness thing with a badge. They think that's cool. Let's see how cool that is. Book of Second Edges, chapter 9, and verse 37. I'm going to start at verse 36. For we that have received the law perish by sin, and our heart also which receiveth not. Verse 37. Notwithstanding the law perish not, but remaineth in his force. Okay? Why is it important? To stay within the most high's bosom. Okay? That's why the law is important. I'm going to read that again. The book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 9, verse 37. Notwithstanding the law, perish not, 
but remaineth in his force. We're gonna, I'm going to stay in that same chapter. 2 Andrew chapter 9. I'm going to jump up to verse. I'm going to step up to verse 11. I'm going to start at verse 10. It's the book of 2nd Edges, chapter 9 and verse 10. For such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me. Verse 11. And they that loathe my law, that means hate it, despise it. You hate the most high's laws. While they yet, while they had had yet liberty and when as yet place of repentance was opened unto them, understood not, but despised it. So right now, the doors of the church is open, as they say. You have place to repent. Come back to the law, statutes and commandments of the Heavenly Father, your God, the one true God. Verse 12, the same must know it after death by pain. So our people like to think, oh, I'm, I be dead, I don't care. Got to die every, got to die every, got to die one day anyway. What the scriptures say, because you loathe the law when you had a chance, you hate the law. Well, you're going to know it, you're going to know about that. After death by pain. Okay. Hmm. Verse 13. And therefore, be not curious how the ungodly shall be punished. And when, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved. Whose the world is, and for whom the world is created. This world was created for the righteous seed. Come back to the law, for you can be that righteous seed. Okay? That's the importance of the law. The importance of the law is so that you and your seeds can be prosperous. So that after death, you won't receive that pain. Book of Deuteronomy. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30, and verse 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Choose life. It's very simple. And with that, I say shalom.